Hello, it's Pastor C.J. Cousins, and I am so glad to have had this opportunity again this week at the Anna Adventist Academy and doing this week of prayer called Called to Greatness. And it is such a joy to be with these young people, man, from preschool all the way up to eighth grade, just sharing Jesus with them every single day. Day. And if you've been journeying with me, I've been doing this brief recap of each message that I'm sharing with the young people every single morning. And uh, the first was chosen, right? We talked about God choosing us and that God anoints us for a unique purpose. And then the second message that we talked about was dealing with with David who was anointed and not yet appointed. What do you do while you wait? What do you do while you're waiting for God to fulfill his dream, his purpose, his destiny for your life? And we talked about basically using your gifts, that whatever God's called you to do, just start doing it now. And then we talked about yesterday focusing on purpose in spite of the negative people, the discouraging people that may be in your life. But today, Today's message is about fighting in your own armor. Fighting in your own armor. When I was growing up, uh, I remember some of my heroes, some of the people that I looked up to, some of the people that were like mentors to me. Uh, number one, um, even though initially I ran from the calling of becoming a preacher to becoming a pastor, uh, I grew up really admiring a lot of pastors, uh, a lot of preachers from diverse backgrounds. And so for me, uh, a big hero of mine, I used to watch him all the time on uh, Christian television, was Mark Finley when he was with It Is Written. Mark Finley was a tremendous inspiration to me. I would watch him and I'd just go, man, I'd be really awesome to reach that many people for Jesus Christ. And then there was, uh, then there is Henry Wright. Henry Wright was a, a tremendous uh, impact and uh, mentor at a distance, if you will, and even Right now, he, he works within my, uh, in my area, in my conference. And so very much a, a mentor, a hero figure to me as a preacher, as a pastor. And then there was, uh, as I was growing up, Jose Rojas at the time. He was the director of youth and young adult ministries for our church in this area of, of North America. And these were people that I looked up to. I said, man, I would love to be like them, to do things that they're doing, to be used by God in the way that God is using them. And that's all good, right? Many of us have people that we look up to, that we say, man, I would love to be like this person. But guess what? After a while, especially after I had surrendered to the call of God in my life, man, I began to realize that I have my own voice. I began to realize that God has wired me differently. God has wired me uniquely. And even now, I'm, I'm still growing and becoming even more and more comfortable in my own skin, in my own approach to ministry, and the way that God has uniquely called me to share Jesus. And this is what David had to eventually learn as we pick up the story in 1 Samuel chapter 17, 31 to about 39. This is after David has said, is there not a cause? Nobody's stepping up to the giant. I'll step up to the giant. And everybody began to talk about it. And it got to King Saul. Oh, I love this. Because again, if you remember, King Saul is described in the Bible as being head and shoulders above everybody else in Israel. What does that mean? He is the giant in Israel. If there is anybody that should have stepped up to challenge Goliath on behalf of God and for the nation, it was King Saul. Now imagine how King Saul is feeling when the only person the only person that has the courage, that has the guts, that has the bravery to say, nobody's going to disrespect God like that. No one's going to defy the God of the armies of Israel. I'm going to step up. If you're not going to step up, I'm stepping up. It's a David generation. David says, I'm here. I'm next. You think, you think Saul was feeling good about that? I don't think so. He brings this guy in. Who is this guy that's actually doing what I'm not doing? David comes in. He interviews David, and as he's talking with David, King Saul begins to do what Eliab, his brother, did. He begins to come at David with these discouraging statements like, you're too young. <laughs> you're too young. You can't do this, right? You're a youth, right? This guy has been a warrior. Goliath has been a warrior from his youth. Who do you think you are, David? 
Who do you think you are to step up and do that thing that I'm not even willing to get up and do? Ah, but I love David's response. So you could almost sense this kind of this kind of bitterness coming from Saul. Like, really? I'm the giant here in Israel, and I'm not, I'm a king. I'm not even stepping up to do it. And you're doing it? Who do you think you are? But I love David's response. David said, man, there was some lion. There was a lion that tried to take one of the sheep that was in the sheepfold that I was shepherding. And God used me to take out the lion. I killed that lion. God used me to take out a bear. There was a bear that came and tried to take one of the sheep. And God used me to kill the bear. And this giant, David says, is just going to be like that bear. It's just going to be like that lion. I've had challenges before in my life. I've had difficulty before in my life. And God was there to deliver. God used me before. He used me differently, maybe than how God has used you. But he's used me before and he will do it again. Ah, I love the bravery. I love the, the confidence that David has in God. God has been faithful in the past. He's going to be faithful in the present. I am not confident in myself, David is saying. I'm confident in the God that's with me. And you also got to remember that David is feeling affirmed. He has been anointed by God. He is ready to step up to the plate and do that which God has called him to do. And so Saul, <laughs> recognizing that he's not going to talk David out of it. He says something and he does something really interesting in 1 Samuel chapter 17, beginning in verse 38. It says, so Saul clothed David with his armor and he put a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Here's what's happening. Saul is saying, if you're going to try, if you're even going to attempt, I probably think you're going to get killed, David. Right? I, I, you must be crazy. But if, you're, but, but, but if you're so bold, I admire your boldness. But if you're going to be so bold, then the way you're going to get victory, the only even chance that you have of getting victory is by wearing my armor. Ha <laughs> ha. Saul is saying, if you want to get victory, you've got to do it my way. Ah, oh, see, David is representing a younger generation. Saul is representing an older generation. And they're saying, listen, if you're going to do it, you've got to do it the way we've done it. You've got to wear my armor. And I want you to understand today what God is saying to you through David's story. Is that if you're going to do what God has called you to do, if you're going to be called to greatness then you've got to fight in your own armor. See, the armor of Saul didn't fit. It wasn't going to do. It wasn't going to help David be successful. It may have worked for Saul and maybe his former glories, but it's now a David generation. It's time for David to do something different. It's time for David to do something creative. God has wired David uniquely. And it's the same thing with you. I remember back when I was in middle school, I was telling the young people this this morning. I was in middle school and I used to hang with the wrong folk, man. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. You know, I, there were things going on in my life and, and uh, there was this void and I was basically trying to be like my, my, my peers. And I was trying to dress like my peers. I was trying to talk like my peers. I was listening to some of the music that my peers were listening to. And there was this image that the culture was prescribing for me. And I began to wear that armor. <laughs> I began to wear an armor that didn't fit. So much so that when I was hanging with that group, right? They used to consider themselves thugs, Lord have mercy. And they said, CJ, there's just something different about you. You're not like us, man. You're an intellectual thug. That's what they said. <laughs> There's, I, I can't put my finger on it. I know it was the Holy Ghost. I know it was the Holy Spirit. It was Jesus. But they said, there's something different about you. You're the, the intellectual thug. <laughs> I want to tell you, their armor didn't fit. The armor that the world may be prescribing for you, it doesn't fit because God has made you different. God has made you unique. God has made you special. He's called you up to do something in this generation that is different. We're living in a time that is driven by information and social media and technology and everywhere you go, there's screens. Is God trying to do something different in this generation for the kingdom of God? Yes, he is, and you're part of the plan. So check it out. You've gotta be like David. If you're going to defeat the enemy, 
You need God, because God's the one we're going to find out tomorrow that gives you the victory, but you've got to fight in your own armor. If you're going to make an impact in this society, in this culture, then you've got to fight in your own armor. Parents are great. Role models are great. Siblings are great. Friends are great. But like a thumbprint, your personality, your wiring, your giftedness is different than theirs. You're special. You're unique. And you're called by God. So much so that he went to the cross to die for you. That if you receive Jesus Christ, you also receive a calling to be great. Not because you're great, but because he's great and he loves you. Fight in your own armor. I'm CJ Cousins and I'm living for him.